Thanks so much, Tim. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here tonight with fellow deplorables. <laughs> Surprised we didn't lock the room so we don't get attacked. Uh, I thought I'd give you some thoughts and then open it up for a Q&A uh, about where I believe we stand today. I wrote some things down which I can't read without glasses. Um, I want to give you good news, bad news, and good news. The first good news I'm going to tell you about is what I see as the state of national politics today. I was, for the record, I was a supporter of Ted Cruz in the primaries. I supported Donald Trump in the general election, not for the MRC, so the IRS is listening, um, which it probably is, uh, but the person. But I can tell you that I suspect there is no one in this room, and pretty much no one um, in America today who could have predicted what this president has accomplished since he came to office. You, you mentioned the... You mentioned the Washington Examiner story. I wish I'd gone there before to write it down, but I, I, I wrote my own thoughts. Just looking at what he's done in, in two years, he's given us just about the, the largest business tax cut in a generation, and we've watched the economy absolutely explode. The numbers are just jumping off the page. 3.9% unemployment, 4.1% GDP growth. Remember, under his predecessor, it was 1%, and they were calling 2% their goal in the new normal. 2.8 million people have dropped off food stamps in America today, already. The Dow, the Dow has set over 100 records since Donald Trump came to office. And that's just economic. Then look at regulatory policy. Every single day, there are regulations that were straining business being slashed or taken off the books. No president, including Ronald Reagan, cut regulations the way Donald Trump has. Maybe as a businessman, he understands that better than anyone else. Look at social policy. It, to me, as a pro-life conservative, it is shocking to recognize the fact that this man has done more for the pro-life movement than any president in history. No president had ever sent a representative to the Right to Life March before Donald Trump, who first sent his vice president and then sent himself this year. On one element after another of the pro-life debate, he has come forward for the conservative movement for the pro-life cause, including another achievement, two absolute rock stars on the Supreme Court together. North Korea has been stalled. Russian adventurism has been stopped. Iran is being choked. China has gotten a very big memo from Donald Trump about trade. Mexico, the EU, Canada, all those countries that were taking advantage of the, of the United States for generations through trade, all of them are negotiating or have negotiated new deals. The European Union, our supposed allies at NATO, finally are paying their fair share. All because Donald Trump made them do it. So I say, that's a hell of a record. Now, now, what do the media say about this? How do they congratulate them? I'm going to just run through some numbers because they're fun and decided to came up with them for you today. Um, this is how they've covered it. In the campaign from July to September, uh, they gave them every month up until November 
88.5% negative, followed by 86.8% negative, 93.6% negative, 89.7% negative, and the monthly one, it was down to 69.2% negative. So he came into office, and in January, he was given a honeymoon by the press, so his, his coverage was only 85% negative. In February, 90%, March, 90%, April, 82%, May, 93%, June, 90%, July, 91%, these are all negative numbers, Sept August, 90%, September, 92%, October, 91%, you see a trend here? November, 90%, December, 84%, January of this year, 86%, February, 95, 95.8% negative, March, 89%, April, 90%, May, 86%, June, 90%, July, 93%, August, 93.9%, September, it dropped rather dramatically to 90.4%. Think about this. Over nine out of 10 stories about this man with this track record have attacked him as a negative story. And what's the good news in all that? Folks, it ain't working. His numbers have gone up. Now what is happening here? I'll get back to that in a second. Then I'm going to give you that news. That's the short term of the world. That's the world of politics. That is, unfortunately, where most of us focus our attention and we're missing the big picture. The left figured it out 25 years ago. The left figured out that the battle is not political. The battle is culture. Change the culture and politics becomes the end game there. It is why the hard left, the far left, has poured literally, literally hundreds of millions of dollars. They're doing it every year into the culture wars. Last year alone, George Soros, think about this number, folks. George Soros invested. $17 billion into his open, um, whatever, society operations worldwide. What do they want to do? Their goal is to turn the Judeo-Christian ethic on its head. It's as simple as that. This, folks, is an attack on Western civilization itself. This is far bigger than the United States of America. And they're being successful at what they're doing. Just 20 years ago, it was inconceivable to think that this country was going to embrace a homosexual agenda. In fact, 38 consecutive states had said no to that referendum. And suddenly, there was a tsunami. It wasn't just the L and the G and the B, it became the T. Joe Biden was right. He said it was going to be the battle. And it was, but it stopped. There's no cue. In this school system, you've got children who are announcing that they are some other sex. And they're in the same bathroom. My son's soccer, my son's daughter played on a so in a soccer game this past weekend in this school system against an eight-year-old boy who said he's a girl Disgusting. and played on the girls' team. And by the way, it's scoring the most goals. Um, this is the reality. Abortion. The abortion debate is moving against the pro-life movement. Just look at Planned Parenthood. Abortion is the, the, it is the bedrock of the far left. Because they know that if they can control this issue, they can control the life issue. You control the life issue, you control everything because you become God. And they have thrown countless hundreds of billions of dollars in here, and it's bank dividends. They have an agenda against the police. There is no two ways of looking at that. When you are supporting Black Lives Matter, you're supporting a radical organization that is declaring war on law enforcement in America. When you support Antifa, when you give aid and comfort 
to not a radical group, not a militant group, but a self-described terrorist organization, you're supporting something very different, very dangerous. History, history itself is being rewritten. If anyone were a student of history, particularly the Civil War, they understand here in Fairfax, there is such a rewrite of history that is doing so much damage to the heritage of this state and indeed to the heritage of this country. It shows an absolute ignorance of the world. When Washington and Lee has announced that it is taking down all pictures of Robert E. Lee as a general and George Washington as a general, because somehow that's now offensive to America. See what I mean about turning this country upside down. What's the bad news? The bad news is that they are succeeding on virtually every single front. And why is that? I'll submit to you, the good news is the good news for one simple reason, and the bad news is the bad news for one simple reason. The good news is good news because finally, 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 someone stood up to the press. Donald Trump said to the media, good news. And he declared the war on the enemy. And he's been fighting them relentlessly. And folks, it is working beautifully. The goal you have, the goal we should have, we would hope to have, is for the media to do their jobs. I'm watching Pigs one. <laughs> but if you can't hear that, the next best thing is to neutralize them so that they aren't effective. In the 2016 campaign, by the time it ended, 89% of the American public in a national poll said they believed that the media had an agenda against Donald Trump. That's the bad, that's, that's all Republicans, but it also included Democrats. So when people watch television and they watch those attacks, that 90% attack on Donald Trump, their reaction is, well, no wonder. You're part of the Democratic Party. You're the tip of the spear for the Democrats. And when you have that reaction, they can say anything they want. It's not working. And it hasn't worked. The bad news is, he's the only one doing it. I have heard, for the past almost 40 years, I've heard from Republicans complaining about the press and then not doing a damn thing about it. And by Republicans, some of you have heard one here, it is our elected officials and our party committees. Now I ask you, blunt question, what is the RNC doing about the media? Answer, nothing. What is Mitch McConnell Going about the media, very different for for Brett Kavanaugh. What's he doing about the press? The number one foe of the Republican Party. Nothing. What is Paul Ryan doing? Nothing. And as a result, they are on defense all day long. And the only thing that has saved them is Donald J. Trump. They can't stand him, but they have to recognize that without him, the Republican Party would be buried. And we owe him the Democratic Party. I want to thank So what's the good news? I look first at those cultural issues. I'll say the same thing. The Republican Party, indeed the conservative movement, has not understood yet that the battle is cultural in this country. If you were to win on those issues, all the political victories would follow. Look how it's worked for the left. Every battle that they have won on the cultural side has ended up in a political victory for them. So why is it our side fighting those cultural battles?
We can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can fight the short-term battles, but we have to fight the long-term battles as well. So it's the good news. What would happen if we did? I want you to imagine for a second. Where would the world look like? What would it look like if the news media did their jobs? What would happen if you had a media that were truly objective, that looked at the world honestly and fairly? The Democratic Party would be destroyed. It's as simple as that. The far left would be exposed and destroyed. If the media were to do their jobs and truly explain the world, not from a Republican or a conservative perspective, but from the standpoint of truth, and tell the truth about the corruption in the city, tell the truth about real laws that are really being broken, by elected officials who deserve to be in prison. If they were to tell the truth, not just about the economy as it, as it exists, but the economy as it existed before this president took over. If they were to tell the truth about the good that this man and, and his party have done on the foreign policy scene, if they were to tell the truth about the consequences of a radical socialist cultural agenda, the conservative movement would be triumphant. And there, folks, is the opportunity for the Republican Party. I'm asked by people, what do we believe in? The question was asked by Tim. What are the three issues you believe in? Mine are pretty easy. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The way I look at the world today is simple. Speaking personally, we are facing the reality that ours may be the first generation in history where we did leave the country a better place for our project. Think about that. If at the end of the day, Ours is a nation that no longer defends and honors the proposition of life, but instead embraces a worldview that says man is God. Then I have failed my project. If at the end of the day, this is a country that embraces the notion that the free enterprise system is evil, and socialism, a la Europe, is the necessary economic engine for this country, then I have failed. If this ends up a country that believes that it has no right to call itself the leader of the free world, because the very idea of American exceptionalism is incoherent, then I have failed. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't intend to fail because I don't like it. I intend to give it everything I've got, fighting the number one enemy of the conservative movement. And I will say, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump was right when he said that the national media are an enemy of the American people. They are our enemy. It is about time that we start fighting them with everything we can. Thank you. You mentioned that the Democrats control our culture. Do you agree that they control our culture because they control our institutions, whether they're Hollywood, K-12, education, academia, and if you agree with that proposition, they control our culture because they control our institutions. How do we get back our institutions? What have we done to get it back? Is the question that I ask. Have we done everything we can? Let's start with academia. Folks, we're sending our kids to these colleges. 
I'm on the board of the Bucky program at Yale. The question I ask our organization is, why the hell is anyone sending anyone to Yale? I mean, you're paying somebody in that institution 60 grand a year to indoctrinate your child to be, <laughs> to be a far left militant. So I ask that question. I also ask people, why are you sending your money to these institutions if they're your alma maters, but they betray everything? that you believe in. Look at Hollywood. I think it's very interesting, by the way, what is happening in Hollywood. You see those numbers that are tanking on award shows. That is cause and effect. If you see those numbers that are tanking on football, that's cause and effect. When you see the value of Nike tank $3.75 billion in 24 hours after it named that hideous man as its spokesman, that's cause and effect. So the good news there, but not enough. Not enough where people are rising and vocally showing their opposition to Hollywood and what it's doing. Our other institutions exist as well. You can say they control everything. They don't control the American people. If you look at the national polls, conservatives have outnumbered liberals by two to one for a generation. Why do we feel we're outnumbered? Because we listen to these people and we think our, our elected officials read the Washington Post and think, my God, everyone thinks this way. America doesn't think that way. America's on our side. And it's not, it's a conversation for some other time, but I will tell you, the secret weapon of the conservative movement is the secret weapon of the Republican Party, and only Donald Trump has understood this. It's social media. The last three presidential elections were decided by social media. Why isn't the Republican Party doing more on this front? There's a reason why Trump tweets every day. By the way, his tweet this afternoon was as bad as his tweet this morning. So, but I tell you, what he said, Pocahontas, commonly referred to as Elizabeth Warren, that is one of the tweets for like, oh, Social media is the weapon we can use, and we can neutralize all those institutions. Because you can re reach tens of millions of people every single day. You can reach more people than Hollywood can. You can reach more people than the NFL can. You can certainly reach more than people than academia can. And you can reach young people if you use social media. We have weapons of our own to use if we choose to use them. So, uh, you. Thank you, Brad, for being here and for your enthusiasm, and you're a wonderful coach for us. Thank you. Uh, I was sitting right there one uh, night they had the school board meeting, and uh, to give you a good example of how lousy the uh, politicians are locally, and that's where uh, I'm sure we're focused and we need to be focused, is they passed a resolution, or whatever it was, it was 10 to 2, and they said uh, they adopted a new family life curriculum. I guess you heard about that. And one of the major things in it is that sex is not identified until after birth. And of course, this side was all like me, and all this side was the LGBTQ, blah, blah, blah. Right? But anyway, it just was a horrible situation. And you know, there's an example of what you're saying. By the way, um, this is my, my, my point here. <sighs> the LGBT population is about 2 to 3% of the American people. And they're dominating everybody simply because they're fighting. And they're sweet. I give them all the credit in the world because they're fighting very hard for their agenda. The traditional family work of, of, of movement is not. And you think Fairfax is bad? Try Princeton, where they have a tenured professor who said, I kid you not, in a book co-authored by Obama's uh, uh, science and technology czar, that life doesn't begin until age four. <laughs> Folks, think that with their I'm not kidding you. Life does not begin until age four, meaning you can terminate that life 
at any stage until age four. Where the media has reported that? It's right there in the post for anyone to see. Imagine what would happen if they're both in. Just me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to told you. This gentleman. You want to go in? Well, this lady. Ladies first. Oh, how about that? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the Me Too movement, and I'm afraid of them. <laughs> For a long time, there was a really vocal anti-Trump movement in conservatism, and um, you know, people had varying opinions, especially during the primary. My question is, you know, the Republican Party has mostly come home, but so much of the conservative um, media, let's say, there's still really there's a hostility to Trump that I, I don't understand. And I guess my question to you is, since you're sort of involved in those circles. What are they waiting for? What is the magic thing that they're waiting for to all of a sudden admit that they were wrong? Like, what, what is it that the anti-Trump movement is clinging to? I guess is what I'm getting at. Well, it's a very good question. Uh, look, I was one of the authors of one of the pieces in that now famous National Review about <coughs> Trump uh, uh, issue. I don't apologize for it one bit because what I said was true then and it remains true now, which was asking the question, does Donald Trump walk with us? Does he walk with the conservative movement like Ronald Reagan does? Did. Ronald Reagan spoke at events. Ronald Reagan wrote organizations. Ronald Reagan raised money for organizations. Donald Trump, up until, until 2016, was a liberal Democrat who supported liberal Democrats. And he, that was his career. But what happened? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> He became a great conservative Republican. And apparently he meant it. And as I've said, he's done more on some fronts than virtually anyone. Do we give him credit? Should conservatives give him credit? Absolutely. Yeah. Should give him credit. That's a question for you to ask them. Uh, but I think that, that, you know, they can disagree on a couple of issues like trade or whatever. If you look at the, at the cause of border of things, and this man's accomplished more than anyone could have hoped. Yeah, Hello, my name is Tony Benedettis, and I'm from Herndon. My son served three terms as mayor of Herndon. He's a good conservative, and so am I. I was disappointed on the night of President Trump's election at 3 o'clock in the morning when he did not thank God. He thanked everybody else. All right, now since then, he has brought God into his conversation. But why doesn't he take advantage of the opportunity with a Catholic wife and he an Episcopalian to go to church on Christmas and Easter in a public way to, so that he demonstrates to the country that God is in charge of us. I, I, I'll answer, I, I can't get into Donald Trump's head, but I'm gonna try to answer. I think that in a very real way, he's not yet comfortable with that proposition. Look, this is a man who came from Manhattan. This is a man who had no concept of what you're talking about. He, he, I mean, he, he would have thought uh, uh, before 2016, he would have seen you as a religious right whack job. And he would have considered himself a religious right whack job if he endorsed that proposition. I think there is serious movement in the right direction of this. I think when he's praying with pastors in the Oval Office, he's praying with pastors in the Oval Office. When he, when he insists on speaking at the Right to Life March, he's insisting on speaking to the Right to Life March. He told me, the only reason he didn't the first year was because he had a meeting with some head of state, which he told me, winking at me, he said, I was thinking about canceling that one too, but I sent Mike Pence. The man has shown real movement on it. it should he have thanked God? Of course he should have thanked God. Will he next time around? I should he will. I hope so. Anyway, I, 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 I am told I'm being yanked off the stage. Thanks, folks. Keep up the good fight.
give Brent Lozell a great hand. That was a fantastic speech. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate you coming out. Okay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Corey Stewart cannot make it on uh, the third Tuesday of every month, so he has been unable to join us. But he did cut a video, and if our technical stuff works, then we should be able to uh, put that up there. No, I think what you have to do is slide that little thing across. You know, uh, let me hop down. Oh. There we go. Got, got it. Got it. Hi, I'm Rich Corey Stewart, Republican candidate for the United States Senate. I want to let you all know we're going to win on November 6th. We're going to win for a lot of reasons. By the way, I've spent the entire past weekend in Fairfax County meeting with members of the C community, members of the Hindu community, members of the Vietnamese community, members of the Jewish community, members of the Hispanic community. We're going to win in Fairfax County. Let me tell you why. Because people are sick and tired of a government of Democrats who are turning a blind eye to the perils of illegal immigration. We have children in Fairfax County who are losing their lives, who are being assaulted, who are being murdered by illegal aliens, especially MS-13 and other illegal alien gangs. But also here's something else that I, that I seem to find that, that people of all of, around Virginia, including in Fairfax County, are reacting to. And that is this. Why is it necessary that children who are of Asian descent have to score 280 points higher on their SAT in order to get to, to the same universities, the same colleges, as other students? It's not right. It's discrimination, which is why in the United States Senate next year, I will introduce legislation to ban universities and colleges from using race in, in consideration of applications to colleges and universities. And finally, I just want to let you know this. We are going to be supporting the President of the United States. The lowest unemployment rate in the United States since 1969. I will vote to renew those tax cuts that have been responsible for this economic growth. You can count on me, Corey Stewart, that we are going to make America great again. We're going to take back Virginia. And thank you, everybody. Let's work and let's have victory on November 6th. Thanks a lot. If you haven't been following, Corey's got a shot at this. And a lot of people thought last June, July, that he was really a long shot. Uh, you know, the most recent poll, which was about a month ago, of likely voters had it at five points. And so Corey, has been, if you've been watching the debates, has really been taking it to our incumbent senator, who has done practically nothing as our senator, much like he did when he was our